Breaking now at 11, Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best announcing her retirement in an email to the entire Seattle Police Department tonight. It comes just hours after the city council voted to slash SPD's budget, a move the chief has fiercely opposed, saying she was not invited to the table to discuss efforts to change policing in Seattle. A longtime veteran of the Seattle Police Department who works closely with Chief Best tells me tonight this was a bombshell. Tonight, the council voted 7 to 1 to cut SPD's budget by 14 percent for the rest of 2020. It is not the 50% cut some activists were demanding and some council members initially supported. Council member Kashama Sawant was the lone no vote. Council member Deborah Juarez was absent. We have team coverage on the fallout starting with Como's Tammy Mutasa and the message the chief sent to her entire department tonight. Tammy? Preston, you know, this is a very shocking and disheartening announcement for the law enforcement community and the black community. Chief Best was the first black woman police chief in this entire department, and we expect to hear from her tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at a press conference with the mayor. Now, let's take a look at this email that Como News obtained. Now, this was sent out by Chief Best to the police department saying she is retiring on September 2nd, not resigning like some media outlets reported. In the email, Chief Best says, quote, this was a difficult decision for me, but when it's time, it's time. Adding, I am confident the department will make it through these difficult times. Chief Best's decision to retire comes just hours after the Seattle City Council voted for cuts to the department. The suggested cuts include up to 100 officers, including 32 patrol officers, 38 officers in specialized units like SWAT, Harbor Patrol, and mounted officers, 30 through attrition or retirement. And in a reversal, the council had voted not to cut the chief's salary by 40%, but instead by 6%. Now tonight, we talked to Jim Fuda from Crime Stoppers about the chief's stunning announcement. It's ludicrous. It makes me sad. Carmen went through the federal consent decree. She brought the agency up to the federal standards. Um, we are progressive agency here. And the fact that this council would negate all that she's done and try to do more cuts instead of uh, be concerned about the public safety and pander to a very small percentage of our population here in this city, it's, um, it's not right. Chief Best says in the email, Deputy Chief Adrian Diaz will serve as the interim police chief. And the chief ends that email by saying, after 28 years in the department, she is thankful to be with SPD and that she considers them family. Now, tonight, I also got a text from black community leaders who fought for Chief Best, telling me that they'll be at that press conference tomorrow, rallying behind her. Back to you. Tammy, thank you. In the last hour, Como News obtained this statement from Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin's office sent to members of SPD. She says, while I understand the chief's reasons, I accepted her decision with a very heavy heart. She goes on to say, Carmen Best is still devoted to this department and our city. I regret deeply that she concluded that the best way to serve the city and help the department was a change in leadership in the hope that would change the dynamics to move forward with the city council. Today, council... They really are anarchists. He's a left-wing anarchist. Whether it's been the chaos at CHOP, the protests in Portland, or the Seattle City Council's move to slash the SPD budget, President Donald Trump has not shied away from throwing punches at the political climate in the Northwest. I think Seattle's made a tragic mistake. I think Portland uh, has no clue as to what they're doing. They have no clue. And today, the president joined the dialogue of disappointment over Chief Carmen Best's sudden retirement after the city council suggested she cut up to 100 officers. It feels very duplicitous. And I, honestly, I just, I have my convictions. I cannot do that. I think it's a shame. I hate to see her go because she did, in her own way, a very good job. Here's political analyst Ron Dotsauer. Trump was not speaking to Seattle today. He believes the conflict here fits into the president's narrative of being tough on crime. What you have is extremism, both on the left in the embodiment of the Seattle City Council and then on the right with, generally speaking, President Trump's followers. Dotsauer believes in the long run to November 2020, it's unlikely voters will resonate with either extreme. They're much more moderate and in the middle 
and they want a balanced picture of how we're going to approach this problem solving. And tonight, the mayor is responding to the president's comments, saying there is a lot of misinformation. She says, quote, I trust Seattle Police Chief Best and Deputy Chief Adrian Diaz to lead public safety in Seattle, not President Trump. The president uses his podium to spread lies about Democratic mayors and cities while failing to provide the meaningful help we need. Back to you. Today, Chief. I'm sad to leave in some ways, but you know, when it's time, it's time. I look forward we to We continue to track today's big story. Embattled Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best announcing her retirement. This comes just one day after the city council cut her salary and slashed the budget of the SPD. Tonight, in light of the chief stepping down, the city council is standing by its cuts. Thomas Patrick Quinn sat down with three city council members who said they remain committed to changing policing in the city. Do you believe the council forced Chief Best out? No, I think it was a combination of things. Council members were remorseful, but despite the chief retiring, do not regret the cuts they approved to the 2020 SPD budget. Do you stand by these suggestions? I do. The council voted to shrink the size of the department by roughly 100 officers. This comes less than a year after three council members, Andrew Lewis, Dan Strauss, and Lisa Herbold, campaigned on the promise to grow SPD. We need to grow the size of our police department. I challenged Herbold. Why now the change of heart? She said after George Floyd's murder, she, like many, had a reckoning. I um, reflected and realized that I needed to have some reckoning with my own assumptions about what makes community safer. Lewis told me while he was campaigning, he was misinformed, now relying on data that 56 percent of 911 calls are non-criminal in nature. And the data just doesn't bear out, as far as I can tell. Um, that we need more police. It bears out we need for more first response and that we're sending the wrong first responder in a lot of situations. Best said another factor in her retirement was not being a part of the budget discussions. Herbold said they're binded by protocol to go through department staff. But Please you heard the chief asking you guys to sit down with her. Even through this process, she said, they haven't called me, they haven't called me. You had that opportunity. I talk, to the, I talk to the chief every two weeks. I have a regular standing meeting with the chief. But because um, every time that I and or my colleagues have diverged from this protocol, we get this scolding memo. So maybe is the process flawed? I mean, perhaps it's flawed. The council will soon begin to negotiate the 2021 SPD budget. Same process, only now a new chief in Seattle. Patrick Quinn, Como News. This is just even bigger than, than Chief Best. Mike Solon, the head of the Seattle Police Union, flat out asked who would want to be Seattle's next police chief. He says he already hears from the 1,300 officers he represents, many, he says, struggling with morale, and now this. It's going to be really difficult to even get police officers to come here in the future because now public safety is at risk. The city council budget cuts mean 100 less officers. Solon insists less officers means more crime, and that's a tall order for a new top cop. It's very frustrating where we are right now. Carmen was one of the best. Jim Pugel was interim police chief at SPD for a year back in 2013, and he's worked under SPD police chiefs over a 31-year career. There's always some people that want to be a chief or a sheriff regardless of what the politics are. He says it's not anti-police sentiment, but city council's lack of inclusion with chief best and budget cuts and cutting her salary that may give future candidates pause. I'd get an ironclad contract. You know, I look forward for them uh, to contact me. I look forward to having these discussions. I look forward to, as we enter the 2021 uh, budget process to, to having fruitful discussions. Adrian Diaz will take over as interim chief next month. The mayor says no chief recruitment until after the budget cycle wraps in the fall. It buys the city time in a search that many believe may take a long time. Our department has had rough times during my career, but I believe this is the most challenging time in our history. At Husky Stadium this evening, things are going to be a lot quieter in Montlake this fall, aren't they? The Pac-12 announced today that the fall sports season has been postponed until springtime. That means no Huskies, no Cougs, no college football. Cabo Femi Abebefe is here to break down this devastating blow to college sports. We had a feeling it was coming yesterday, Femi. Yeah, Mary, you really have to feel for everyone involved in college athletics, but the medical experts ultimately decided there are too many uncertainties to have a season this fall. Now, the Pac-12 has emphasized student-athlete safety and well-being as the biggest factor in postponing the fall season to the spring. 
But when it comes to football, another safety concern has cropped up. Just how feasible is it to play a spring and fall season in the calendar year of 2021? Pac-12 Pac Commissioner Larry Scott says they're still working on the details. We are reluctantly coming to, the, to this decision that uh, the earliest that we could start uh, would be in January uh, with a lot of details to figure out, including the point you made, which is a, a very good one and, and weighs heavily on our coaches, our athletics directors, our medical personnel as they think about spring. UW Athletic Director Jen Cohen put out this statement, quote, we will continue to work tirelessly to give these students and all of our students an opportunity to compete this year. Our commitment to provide an environment for our students to thrive holistically, physically, mentally, academically, and socially does not change. We would also like to thank Husky Nation for all they do and provide for our students and our entire department. We have the greatest fans and supporters who have helped build this incredible place, and we can't wait to be reunited with them again on Montlake when the time is right. So.